So, you want to get into Ice Planet? Well, have I got a video for you. I'm your host, RR Slugger, and today we're taking a look at the complete LEGO Space sub theme, Ice Planet 2002. Originally released in the year 1993, Ice Planet marked a huge step forward for LEGO in a number of ways. In addition to introducing the first overtly feminine face print within LEGO Space, Ice Planet was also the inaugural flagship series for the now retired trans neon orange color. This bright orange vibrancy contrasted brilliantly against the cold blues and whites that made up the rest of the palette. Prior to the groundbreaking color scheme of Rock Raiders, it was entirely typical for space themes to only feature two or three main colors with a single accent, and Ice Planet is nearly the poster child for this. This does make designing mocks for the theme especially easy and inexpensive, as the colors needed are plentiful and still in production, save for one. Additionally, Ice Planet mocks can adapt to include new molds over the years, unlike a theme such as Rock Raiders, which is largely trapped by its use of original greys. Getting into building Ice Planet mocks is both easy and rewarding, so I highly recommend you try it out sometime. But is getting into collecting the series easy and rewarding? Well, let's find out! To help us with ranking the 8 Ice Planet sets, we're going to once again use our tried and true objective system of measurement, the Slugometer. Each time I talk about a set, I will give it a 1, 2, or 3 slug rating, based on what I consider to be the set's quality and desirability as a collector. As always, these scores are relative to the series in question, meaning that a 3 slug ranking for a series like Dino Island may not equate to a 3 slug ranking for Ice Planet, and so on. This also means that there are always going to be sets that rank low and sets that rank high. I'm scoring them against each other with an emphasis on what I consider to be the best sets to prioritize when collecting. A set with only a single slug rating does not necessarily mean it's a bad set, just that I would recommend other sets before it. Let's start things off with the smallest set in the series, Ice Planet Scooter. Because there's almost nothing to be said about the puny build itself, we'll take this opportunity to examine our first generic Ice Planet minifigure. This series was one of the first LEGO Space themes to go beyond the common Happy Smile face print, and this guy's cool white hair suits him well. The suit design and visor are also quite striking, leading Ice Planet to have some of the best looking minifigures of any LEGO Space theme, in my opinion. The slugometer, however, only grants this set a single slug. Other than the fact that it was re-released a number of times under other set numbers, there's nothing noteworthy here. Let's move on. 6814 Ice Tunnelator is next on the list, and was the only Ice Planet set I had growing up. I still have the box, believe it or not. I appreciate the gallant attempt of the designers to make alternate builds out of the minuscule number of pieces here, but alternate builds are not the topic of today's video. Instead, let's discuss the main build we're looking at here. Notably, the Ice Tunnelator introduces us to four small-sized sci-fi wheels in white. If you collect Ice Planet sets in any substantial quantity, you're going to be seeing a lot of these. Other than that, I think the white sci-fi chair is another great part addition and really helps tie the whole model together. As much as I like this one-off little set, there are plenty of better choices on this list. One slug. 6834 Celestial Sled is the next one I want to look at. Here we have our first look at Commander Cold, the leader of the Ice Planet mining mission. I'm not sure if he has a large LEGO mining ship like Chief did in Rock Raiders, but he does have a pretty awesome alternate torso to accompany his unique face print. Commander Cold, or at least his stunt double, would later make a reappearance in 2022, wearing an even cooler bomber jacket. Altogether, another great minifigure for a theme full of great minifigures. The Celestial Sled itself makes great use of these large ski pieces originally designed for the Technic figures of the 1980s. Four of them in tandem make for a large, smooth underside that the sled can glide upon. The aft section has a lot of nice detail, and it's quite intricate for 1993's standards. 
As alluded to by the large yellow arrow, this entire rear module can detach, as can the thruster itself. The Technic pin system that allows this isn't great, however, and I can't help but wonder how modern molds would have alleviated this. Overall, I think the Celestial Sled is a good set, and easily earns two slugs. The next set that we're taking a look at is undoubtedly one of the best for its size and the theme, and yet, it, it doesn't have a name. Only released as a part of a two-pack, Bricklink opts to retroactively call this one Satellite Plow, and therefore, so shall I. Once again containing Commander Cold, the standout feature of this set is the printed plow on the front of it. What a perfect idea for a set in the Ice Planet theme. It's such a shame this one had a limited release. Just like with the Celestial Sled, the Satellite Plow features a removable scanner section on the rear. Even though the trans-neon orange dish of the previous set is far cooler than what we get here, the connection point to the vehicle is undoubtedly better. Using the anti-studs on the back of the sci-fi chair like this is a clever idea, and I think it leads to a more well-rounded build altogether. I want to give the Satellite Plow the three slugs I know it deserves. But that limited release method has caused this set to become the rarest of the series, meaning you may have to pay a bit of a premium for it. I'm gonna bop it down to two slugs as a result, as I can't full-throatedly recommend it the way I can with the more common sets. Still, if you're serious about getting into Ice Planet, seek this one out. 6879 Blizzard Baron is a medium-sized spacecraft with some cool design ideas. Once again, including our generic ice miner, the Blizzard Baron also features a spacious, albeit strange, cockpit for them to pilot the craft. Using the minifigure-sized skis as landing gear is an inspired choice, probably the single best element of this vessel. The forward-facing wings create a sharp, angular look to the craft when viewed from above. When viewed from the side, we can see an interesting use of these rare, white, quarter-circle octagonal pieces. 1993 would be the first and last time they would be produced, only appearing in one other set in this color. It's not a piece I would think to use on the wing of a spaceship, but I kinda like it here. Unfortunately, I think the aft section lets the rest of the model down. When viewed from behind, obvious and egregious gaps in the pieces emerge, and one can't help but notice how obstructed the satellite dish really is. Even though it's built on a 2x2 turntable, the tolerances don't allow it to turn here. Instead, you must detach the radar section, exposing even more of the patchwork design. The Celestial Sled can transport the radar section of the Blizzard Baron, but the inverse is not true at all. Interconnectivity between sets is sometimes hit or miss with LEGO, and unfortunately, it's largely a miss with Ice Planet 2002. In the end, the Blizzard Baron has its moments, but there are enough drawbacks here to tether it from succeeding past two slugs. 6898 Ice Sat 5 is an eight wheeled, magnet armed rocket transport truck. How cool is that? <laughs> Driven by a generic ice miner, this vehicle actually does sport some impressive interplay with the Ice Station Odyssey set, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's focus on what's offered here. I didn't mention it when talking about the Blizzard Baron earlier, but this blue mining tool is actually quite the rare piece, only having ever been released within these two sets. Likewise, a number of these other blue elements, especially those in the lift arm, are rare or long retired. Both significant trans-neon orange windscreen pieces were only ever included in one other set, one of which being the Ice Station Odyssey mentioned earlier. Lastly, this white signal piton is making its final appearance here. Indeed, there are a number of rare pieces comprising this model, making the prospect of parting it out from bulk bricks an unenviable one. As a standalone set, I find the Ice Sat 5 to be quite self sufficient. The magnetic crane arm is rather poseable, even if it'll be a cold day on Christo before these flimsy fingered hinge joints hold any amount of weight. The bed of the vehicle also stores the probe module, which can be affixed to the tip of the rocket when preparing for launch. Perhaps the most awesome feature here is the ability to tip the aft skyward, allowing you to launch the rocket into orbit right from the back of the truck. 
I think this set has a lot of great stuff going for it and may be worthy of three slugs. Let's talk about 6983 Ice Station Odyssey now. This facility serves as the base station for the ice miners on Cristo, allowing them to launch survey probes into the upper atmosphere. Resting atop this large raised base plate, the station's claim to fame is undoubtedly this pair of set exclusive trans neon orange windows. I've always seen these as some sort of heat reflectors, generating warmth for the minifigures below. Notably, the blue corner plates they stand on are also set exclusive. The central mechanism of the base is this articulated launch silo that actually allows you to position rockets for takeoff. The mechanism uses this strange Technic rack winder piece and interlocking rail, both of which were retired completely after this set. It works well enough for what it is, but it's hard not to see this as a completely independent play system from everything else built around it. The base itself sprawls out onto another base plate, but there really isn't much out here other than another magnetic crane arm akin to that on the ice sat 5. Overall, I think this space could have been better used as an area to put those mining tools to the test, but it would still be a number of years before we'd really see any substantial terrain builds from the LEGO group. In terms of minifigures and side vehicles, this set finally sees the inclusion of Dr. Kelvin, as well as the previous two we've seen before. I really wish she would have been included in one of the smaller sets as well, as I love her design with the giant hoop earrings and flame red hair. So unique and sadly exclusive to this theme. The first side vehicle plays like a budget ice at five with less detail and function, fairly forgettable overall. The second vehicle I find far more interesting. Featuring a pair of skis from the Celestial Sled, this little skipper looks far more suited for speed. A pair of lights, or what could be laser cannons, flank either side and interlock with the model via a novel series of connections. Really neat, and definitely my favorite build in the whole set. Now, I realize I will be shunned as a blasphemer for saying this, but I really don't think the Ice Station Odyssey is all that great. I, I know, I know, I'm sorry. It's a fine set, and maybe these features played better in 1993 than they do today, but ultimately I found it all rather underwhelming. To be clear, I'm more critical of sets with larger piece counts because they have the means and obligation to do more with them. In this case, I'm just not feeling it. You can hit that dislike button until Christo freezes over, but the Ice Station Odyssey is only getting one slug. I think you can build something better with the pieces here. I believe in you. That brings us to our final set today, 6973 Deep Freeze Defender. Historically, I've been reluctant to recommend or score big sets higher on the slugometer, but that changes right now. This is the set to get from Ice Planet 2002. With its imposing and iconic silhouette, the Deep Freeze Defender lives up to its name and serves as the ultimate outing for this theme. Doing a fair share of the heavy lifting here are these long retired tapered wing molds used to create those unique contours, especially prevalent towards the front of the vessel. The dual cockpit design is definitely something Dr. Cyber would approve of, though even he would not think to add this next feature, individual detachable ski pods. Both of these smaller vessels have integrated accessory storage and limitless play potential. It's a joy to slide them along flat surfaces using the plethora of round anti-stud tiles on the underside. I think their shape and design is pure ice planet perfection, and they both represent my favorite models in the entire theme. When one pod is jettisoned, the second pod can be reconfigured to the middle position to remain in control of the Deep Freeze Defender. Additionally, there is actually another breakaway point in the middle of the ship. Just lift these two highlighted tabs and remove the aft module. And, if you haven't guessed it already, the second pod can attach to the front of this craft, essentially creating two spaceships for the price of one. 
all of these connection points feel sturdy and intuitive to use, which sometimes can't be said for other systems that use too much or too little grip strength. Ice Planet was knocking it out of the park back in 1993, and while some sections may look a little boxy, they are far from featureless. The midsection of the Deep Freeze Defender houses a secret beneath this set-exclusive print. A rocket and probe module can be transported or launched from this silo. Unfortunately, this rocket is slightly different from the one seen in the Ice Station Odyssey or IceSat 5, which is a major dent in the interconnectivity of these sets. The Deep Freeze Defender is best enjoyed on its own, in my opinion. The rear section of the vessel actually contains a hidden spacecraft. Unlocking the hangar bay and rolling back this door will articulate the scout ship into a launch position. From there, we can either blast off into space or return the ship to a resting state, which will begin closing the door automatically. It's a clever little feat of engineering and really impressed me for this era of LEGO. Lastly, we receive all three of the Ice Planet minifigures in this set, complete with accessories and individual vehicles. If I haven't made it abundantly clear already, I think this set is absolutely fantastic. The Deep Freeze Defender goes above and beyond with its unique design and compelling play features. If it's within your means to get this one, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I certainly wasn't. And there you have it, all eight of the Ice Planet sets. While the Deep Freeze Defender is the clear winner here, I must admit I had some difficulty ranking those mid-tier sets against each other. Besides the absolutely excellent Satellite Plow, I think my personal favorite of the batch is actually the Celestial Sled. I realize I ranked the IceSat 5 higher, but I did so because I felt it had a better play and display value. Honestly, for Ice Planet, any of those sets with two or three slugs are great options. I'd say go with your favorite. Obviously, in a perfect world, I'd recommend everyone go out and get the Deep Freeze Defender. I know that's unrealistic, however, so here are some other options. For the small and medium sets, Commander Cold is featured in the Celestial Sled and Satellite Plow. I'd recommend pairing one of those sets with any of the others here to maximize your minifigure diversity. Each set is loaded to the teeth with minifigure accessories, so there's no need to worry about that aspect at all. If you wish to ignore the slugometer and go after the Ice Station Odyssey anyways, I'd at least recommend pairing it with the Ice Sat 5 as they synergize better than any other sets in the theme. Some of these models may be easy to part out on Bricklink, but keep in mind there are some old and odd pieces included in a number of these sets, so stay frosty. In the end, you may be able to come up with something even more compelling than these retail sets with a mock of your own, so I encourage you to get creative. Three basic colors plus trans neon orange, and you're set. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I'll see you next time for another video.